Right guys, welcome to another video. If you like fishing videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I like to put out regular videos of all my fishing and I show you all my tactics and rigs and bait and everything. And also I do dedicated rig tying and tactics videos as well. So if that sounds like the sort of thing you like, please just click subscribe and keep watching for the rest of the video. Welcome to the River Trent. Um, we've just had the most epic walk along the river with our barrows and our gear. Look, I've just dumped all my stuff down. You can see Matt in the distance over there. He's in the swim next door. Um, and this is my swim down here. Um, obviously, that's the river. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I've just sort of chucked my bed chair down there for a second. But, um, but yeah, I'm just going to try and get everything set up. Um, I've not done a lot of barbel fishing and uh, if you saw my video last year when I went to the river Y, uh, it wasn't very successful so I'm hoping that this video is going to be a little bit more prolific and I'm going to have more fish to show you. Um, it feels a bit dodgy where we are, there's like cows and stuff in the field and what sounds like a Tyrannosaurus rex around the other side. My mate thinks it could be a bull or something so yeah, it's a little bit worrying, but we're going to go with it for now and see how we get on. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we're just going to get a couple of rods out, get the bivvy set up and everything, and then I'll talk to you a little bit more about the tactics we're using. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll have some fish to show you. guys um, it's half past eight already I don't know where today's gone we, uh, we were quite late leaving the um, the reservoir if you'd seen part two of this four part series um, my 2019 road trip you'll see um, we we're at a reservoir um, just sort of in the Midlands I didn't want to name where it was but um, you know it was about um, an hour hour and a half drive away from where we are now and uh, we were quite late leaving there and um, we both had showers and stuff before we left because we'd been on the bank for two nights and then uh, we needed to go to the tackle shop and we went and checked out um, a place called Bob's Island which was recently in the Angling Times um, it's quite cool, there's like a bridge you go over and then there's like an island with a couple of weirs and you can fish all around that and you can park your cars behind your swim and stuff but we got there and it was absolutely rammed and you know, not really our sort of thing if you know what I mean um, we wanted to get away from it all and somewhere quiet so yeah we went to Future Fishing chatted to the guys in there, really helpful guys actually um, really nice guys and they've sort of put us on this place down here um, bit of a bit of a quiet stretch that um, nobody's really about and um, we're, we're coming into the evening we're sort of running out of time I wanted to show you my rigs and my bait and everything but I just wanted to get the rods out because you know it's going to be dark fairly soon so we'll do that tomorrow I'll, I'll go through everything that I'm doing tomorrow and actually Matt's only just um, got all his rods sorted and he's had a run already um, must have been a barbel but there's carp in here as well uh, so it could have been a carp but it screamed off you know and he was just finishing setting up his bivvy when well, he's only just got the rods out and um, unfortunately it kited straight left and into an overhanging tree and sort of cut him off on the branches there so that's a bit of a gutter but it's really promising that, that we've had some action already you know um, like I say, Matt's only been set up a little while. I've had my rods in a bit longer. Um, and the only difference between us is he's put hemp out over his. Um, and I'm using boilies and pellets, which I'll, I'll show you tomorrow. But, um, yeah, maybe I'll put some hemp out as well tomorrow. I'll see how it goes. Um, I'm hoping a carp's going to come along. So, obviously, boilies and pellets is a good tactic for them. Um, but the barbel as well should take that. So, we'll see anyway. But um, for tonight, you know, I'm just going to probably... Uh, knock the filming on the head 
and um, pretty knackered after the walk here, you know, a good couple of miles with a barrow and everything. Um, so yeah, just going to have a beer probably and get some dinner on the go and um, see what the night brings. So I'll keep you updated guys and um, tomorrow we'll go through all the tactics and everything. Good morning guys, and I uh, just wanted to bring you up to date really with what's happened so far. So, um, as you will have seen, we arrived yesterday late afternoon and got got all set up and everything. We are absolutely shattered, so apologies I didn't do very much filming, but um, we've, we've done the night now, and there's been a bit of activity, so... Matt's lost a couple of bigger fish. So Matthew, how do you feel about losing those two fish last night? I've had better fishing episodes. <laughs> quite, quite tightly these swims and the fish seem to be getting round to the side and there's lilies and stuff and they're, they're just getting caught up in there. So we're talking about maybe having a move today, uh, a bit more about that later, but I've actually managed a couple of chub as well. So. Uh, just sort of just before it got dark, I had a, a twitchy take on one rod and, and picked it up and felt a bit of resistance and then it came off. Uh, literally, I was just redoing that rod and, and my other rod went, and it was a bit more positive take this time. And yeah, after a short battle, I had a nice um, four pound. I think it was four pound four ounces, four pound six ounces, something like that. Chub, which um, you know is a nice decent size, you know. When I was a kid, that would have been an absolute dream fish. <laughs> uh, but these days, when I'm catching carp all the time, it sort of uh, feels a bit insignificant, really, which is a shame, you know. Maybe I should get back to a bit more river fishing, but living on the Isle of Wight, I'm quite limited, so, you know, what can you do, hey? <laughs> uh, but then I had, uh, a couple of hours later, an absolute screaming take on the same rod. And um, this time, the fish was a little bit bigger, I think it was five pound, five pounds for again. So yeah, that's uh, actually probably a, a PB chub that one. <laughs> um, but it was pretty much dark by that point and uh, the, they don't like being out of the water very long chub, so I didn't really want to film it for you. Uh, if we get any today, obviously I'll, I'll show you those. I feel like we should have some more fish. Um, I doubt they only feed just as it's getting dark, but we did have quite a flurry of activity for a couple of hours there. Um, you know, Matt probably had four four takes, I suppose, and just landed that bream, unfortunately, and lost a couple of bigger fish, but a couple of the takes were absolutely savage, and um, one of them, he said, he just couldn't stop it, he just kept going and going and going. Uh, so definitely something like a barbel or a chub, uh, sorry, barbel or a carp, um, which we know there's carp in here as well, you know, so there's some bigger fish around, we just need to land one now, don't we? So the plan is possibly to check out this swim a bit further down where it's a bit more open, there's, there's less trees to the side, so if a fish decides to kite one way, um, hopefully we can sort of get enough side strain on to stop them getting into any trouble. Um, and I've got my waders, uh, you can see down there actually, um, I think we might need to sort of share them because Matt doesn't have any waders but I think we might need to chuck them on quick when we get a take and get out into the water so we can get some side strain on the fish. But um, in a minute I'm going to wind in and redo my rod because it's been out all night. So when I do that I'll run you through just quickly my rig that I'm using and I'll talk to you a little bit about the baits that I've got with me as well. Right, so as I said I'm going to run you through my setup uh, for this trip now. So um, basically, on my uh, barbel rod, I, I've just got a couple of old rods really for barbel fishing because I, I don't do it very often once a year. So I've got one kind of heavy feeder rod which takes four ounces apparently, and then I've got an old, um, it's actually a pike dead bait rod, but it's a, a two and a two and a quarter test curve, so it's quite a good good strength for barbel, you know. Um, so yeah, I haven't got matching rods or anything, nothing too fancy like like the carp gear that, <laughs> that I normally use, but 
But yeah, we've got a little uh, 4,000 sized spinning wheel with 12 pound main line on my um, heavy feeder rod. And then coming down the main line, I'll get a bit closer for you. We've got um, a leg clip system with a three ounce lead on it. Um, and I've actually fished that running style, so um, that can come out. These these leg clips from from Angling Iron, they actually have a pin that goes through, which locks the locks the swivel in place. But if you don't put the pin in, then the swivel can pull out. So I think for barbell fishing, you really want a running lead, so you can detect any sort of finicky bites, especially when there's other species in the river like bream and stuff um, they might not necessarily scream off and give you a positive indication so you need a running lead so you know if something's picked up your bait um, so, so that coming down that I've got a, a quick clip there quick, quick link um, with a bit of sleeve over it just to stop it coming off there and then I've got about five feet of um, of 25 pound supple braid. Um, I've used the ESP sync link for this. I just had some left over from when I used to use supple links in my carp fishing. Um, and then simply to that, I've not just knotted a size eight angling iron chod hook. And I've got three pellets with a little bit of red foam on the end, just to stop the um, pellets coming off the hair really because um, the sort of drilled pellets they can slide up and down the hair which doesn't hold the hair stop in place if you know what I mean when they slide back the hair stop can fall out so a bit of foam just stays up against the hair stop and stops it coming out so I've got and also adds a bit of buoyancy I guess which helps helps the bait kind of waft around a bit um, which apparently the bar will seem to like that's why we've got such long hook links as well that was a little tip given to us by the guys at future fishing so thanks for that if you're watching guys uh yeah so that's three sort of robin red drilled pellets there um with a size eight hook and that's the setup really it's um it's literally just a knotless knot which i'm sure you've seen a million times before and if you haven't just um just search it on youtube you know you'll find a, a knotless knot video i'm sure um so yeah i'm putting that out with a little pva bag just nicked on the hook and wrapped around so I've got a PVA bag there with some of the pellets in uh, and I've also got some Richworth Megaplex boilies in there which is a new fish meal that they brought out this year which is an updated version of the old Ultraplex which is a really successful bait and this bait is I'm sure a good barbel bait um, it's got, you know, all the right sort of ingredients in there. Bit of um, bird food and, and fish meal and sort of liquidised fish and that sort of stuff. So similar ingredients to a pellet really. But at the moment I'm going with a pellet hook bait just to see how that works. And then I can always change to boilies um, depending on how we're getting on. So that's the tactics. I've just been firing out a few pellets as well just in the area. And a few boilies just scattered around just to get a bit of a carpet and feed out and then fishing my PVA bag over the top, so yeah, that's about it. We might we might have a bit of a move later on, so I'll update you about that, and obviously any fish, we'll show those as well. Hey guys, so something I thought I'd just quickly explain about my setup. Um, normally with a, a running rig, um, you know, sort of quite a few years ago, you used to just have a, um, a lead sliding on the line, you know, with a swivel and then the hook link attached to the swivel and you might have a bead there just to protect the uh, the knot. But these days, um, with, the, with the sort of lead clips around, it's a lot easier to use a lead clip because it allows you to change the weight of the lead. So if you, you fish a different swim, you know, and you've got a bit more current there, you can just put a heavier lead on. Some, some swims might need like a six ounce lead where I'm fishing here, two or three ounces is plenty, so it just gives the option to do that without having to um, cut your line and retie it. The other thing is fish safety really, um, it comes from carp fishing. 
you know, if, if you've got a lead on the line and it's swinging about and you, you're sort of coming through some snags and stuff, that lead can cause the fish to get caught up in, you know, any weed, any snags, any lilies like we've got here. Whereas um, if you've got a lead clip on, if it does get a bit caught up, then the lead can pull free and hopefully you've got more chance of landing the fish. Um, the ones that I use are these, um, these angling iron ones here. If you can see those. And you've got tail rubbers which go on the back to sort of stop your lead coming off in the cast. And, and that's the actual lead clips themselves. And hopefully you can see in the packet, they've got holes in, in the side of them there. And so your main line comes through from this end and attaches to a swivel and then you pull the swivel inside and where the eye of the swivel goes in that hole you put one of these little pegs here and that just stops the swivel pulling out so if you don't want a running rig and you want the lead to come off on the take even you can put that in and it fixes the swivel in there and then when a fish takes savagely you know put the lead can pull off on the take if that's what you need to do um, but if you want a fish running you just don't put the peg in. Right guys, here's a little tip. Um, if the barbel are being a bit cagey, which they are at the moment because of the low water and clear water conditions, um, you can try trundling free line meat down the river. Um, so we've got a chunk of luncheon meat there. I normally sort of ruffle the corners off and chuck them in as, um, as free bait sort of thing. And then what I've got here is a size four angling iron continental style hook and I've weighted it with some putty there on the shank and that just gives it a bit of casting weight and also gets it down to the bottom in this uh, flowing water otherwise it would just flutter about sort of mid water you want it on the bottom really for barbel so the way you um, hook this you just push it through like that and and it comes out the other side and you turn it around so the point goes in elsewhere than where it started and then you put it back to hide the point like that and, and that'll just trundle along the bottom with the current and you don't have any weight up the line or anything like that so it's a bit more subtle and the barbel when they're a bit cagey they seem to like a moving bait because um, they hit it almost out of instinct and static baits just won't be touched at all when it's these sorts of conditions. So that's why I've been trying that today. I did sort of 45 minutes this morning and then about an hour this afternoon, but with no joy, unfortunately. But um, tonight I've got a bit of a change of plan. I'm gonna bait up a bit with hemp because that's what Matt did last night and he had a couple of runs. Unfortunately, he lost them both, but he baited up with hemp using a bait dropper, uh, which he's just lent me. So that's a bait dropper there. So what I'm gonna do is um, fill that, fill this bit up with hemp and then you shut the lid and put it down so the wire traps the lid and then you cast it out and then when it hits the bottom, the lid opens like that and it deposits all the hemp or whatever bait you wanna use down near the bottom rather than up on the surface where it'll get drifted down the current and away from where you want it. So Matt's very kindly lent me this and I'm just gonna give that a go now. So hopefully this is gonna be the difference because uh, last night I only had a couple of chub and then a bream. I didn't seem to have any barbel in my swim whereas Matt had a couple of absolute screaming takes which must have only been barbel. Unfortunately he lost them both as I said but you know I feel like I need to learned from the master because he, he is a bit more of a barbel angler than me as you know if you watch my channel I'm more of a carp fisherman but uh, yeah we're going to give it a go so I'm going to chuck this out with some hemp now get a nice little carpet out there and then probably fish 
um, boilies and pellets and stuff over the top of that. So let's see how it goes. Right then, here we are, the last morning of our River Trent barbel fishing trip. And I'm really surprised to say that we've not had a barbel, unfortunately. Uh, it's just one of them things. I think the river's been quite low and clear, which is never good conditions. And it's a funny time of year, you know, around, well, just after spawning time, it can either be really good or, or not good. <laughs> but um, we caught loads of fish last night, you know, both me and Matt, he had um, probably four or five bream, something like that. And I had, I had about four chub actually, all, all decent sizes, you know, sort of three, four pound, I think five pound, the biggest one. And also some real big bream as well. Um, and I, I ended the night on a double take with two five pound bream. I sort of, uh, after that I'd had enough really. It got to midnight and, you know, no barbel came along and we were just catching bream after bream. And, um, and you know, the occasional chub in between was quite nice. I, I sort of, uh, I put on a really big bait to try and avoid the bream. I put on a massive cube of luncheon meat, um, like that sort of size. Um, sort of, you know, three inches square type of thing to avoid the bream. And um, I left it out and it's, it was out there a bit longer and then a, a big chub, like a five pounder, took that as well. So even, you know, even a bait that big, is um it's going to get taken by whatever's down there sort of thing so yeah i wound in in the end because i wanted to get some sleep and um i just didn't feel like the barbel were going to turn up and i think matt kept his rods fishing last night and he didn't have any barbel so you know i probably did the right thing um, and yeah what more can i say really it's been a bit a bit of a tough session when we when we got here it looked good and we saw a barbel kind of stick its head out and uh and that had a couple of takes which we unfortunately lost and we thought oh you know it's going to be a good session we've got a good chance of a few fish and it's just been pretty hard going after that as far as barbel goes you know i've tried rolling meat along in the current just free lined i think i showed you earlier on and tried all sorts of different baits i've had, I've had boilies i've had pellets i've tried meat um, the only thing i haven't tried is maggots but there's a lot of small sort of silver fish and everything in here. I think you just get smashed by them, so I don't think maggots would necessarily be the way forward. So yeah, what more can I say? You know, I hope you've picked up a few tips along the way. Um, my little trick with uh, weighting a hook to, to run the meat down in the flow, that's quite good. And um, you know, I, I think, I hope you've enjoyed the, the rigs and how we tackle these rivers. Um, it's just a shame that we haven't had a fish to show you, but this, this does work, you know, this is how you fish for barbel. Uh, it just so happens on this occasion that, that it wasn't to be. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. That's the end of part three of my 2019 road trip. And keep an eye out on the channel because part four, we're going to be hopefully at Bluebell Lakes if we can get on there. If not, um, we'll be somewhere else with big carp in it. So. Part four of the road trip is going to be all about the carp again, which is more back to what I know. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video.